All right. So the origin story really begins like this. Um, I went and got an MBA in the early 80s because my then girlfriend's mother told me it was a good idea. Um, <laughs> applied to one school, got in. Um, that led me to get a job in, in bank consulting because I was an early 80s MBA. And if you didn't know anything, you became a consultant because it was the fastest way to learn. And it worked. Learned a lot. And uh, the short version is you know, thereafter, um, in, in 35 years or so, I went through four startups. So I'm a four-time loser, uh, repeat offender. Um, like to think I've, I've learned a little along the way, had some successes, had some losses. Uh, but in general, fintech's been very, very good to me. And I think I got extremely lucky. You know, I, I hit the scene about the same time as the personal computer becoming co common. And then the internet coming alive, you know, kind of 10 years into that. So I, my timing was very, very fortunate and I got to ride the wave for a long time. Cool. Okay. I'm interested to hear your thoughts, Steve, because everybody talks about FinTech, like it's some new thing. It's brand new, but I mean, what, the cores have been around since like the fifties, you know, I mean, and I mean, online banking, especially think about payments and cards and ATMs. I mean, you're going back 30, 40 years, right? And maybe the modern era, you could argue probably started with us in mobile, what, 10 years ago, something like that. Yeah, I think that's fair. Yeah. But I mean, maybe in the last five, I guess you've had sort of uh, this, I don't know, digital experience conversation is personalization, data driven. It's gotten heavier, but it's always been there, right? That's right. And and I think, you know, banks and, and other financial institutions have kind of halfway won the war. Um, you know, because of our relationship with customers, you know, we, we know from our experience that, you know, you get a chance to touch the, the customer in digital channels, maybe 20 times a month and, and they're coming to you. And I, I look at that and say, what should we be selling them or what should we be doing for them? Uh, and maybe it's the financial advice or a lot of other things, but I know for darn sure that if you hit Amazon 20 times a month, you're going to buy something five or six times a month. Yep. We should be thinking about how we do that in our world because it, you know, the bankers have done the hard part. They've got people coming. And, and the question is now what? That's a great point. I, I think to that, though, it's weird for me because I think the, the common answer out there from everybody is buzzwords. Dig it's digital transformation. It's yeah. personalization. It's data-driven analytics, bleh, right? But there's not a lot of detail as to what all of that exactly means, right? It's just more like consultant buzzwords. So I think I'm with you, but we got to get a little more tactical. You know? yeah. We do. And I kind of like to go back to, to old school banking and you know, ask yourself, you know, if, if you rewind the pre-ATM days, uh, when you actually had to go in the bank to make a deposit or make a withdrawal, you know, you probably had that same customer coming to the bank, maybe not 20 times a month, but maybe 10 if they're in a business or maybe 20 if they're in a business and we're doing a daily business deposit. And ask, ask yourself, if they walked into your physical branch that often, what, what should we be doing for them? And the answer may be as simple as get me in and out quickly. Don't show me a long teller line because that's going to aggravate me. I mean, it may be really simple. Just focus on make it faster, easier, more comfortable, but then the, you know, the question comes, what, what's the value add? What can we do to help? And I'll say this, guys. I got a heck of a relationship with my phone. It's super personal. It's on your person all the time. But it's a lot different than my relationship with you guys, right? And I mean, you guys are the guys I talk to about business stuff, right? And I think a lot of bankers, that's especially community banks, that's long been a theme. So I'm Thank not you. about to replace that or if it should be replaced. I have one little story that kind of you know illustrates what you're saying at multiple levels. So my my uh, younger daughter, you know, mid twenties, a couple years into her her career, uh, professional person, and she's going to go buy her first new car. And so you know, her dad tells her, sweetheart, you, you need to get three or four bids to make sure you're you know getting the right price, not being taken advantage of, all that kind of thing, like dads do. And so she went to credit union at her work. And she went to Chase Bank, uh, where, where she banks, and talked to the, the auto dealer about a loan. And she's a little unusual. She'd saved her money, had a pretty good down payment. So this was going to be a good loan for somebody. And the credit union said, well, thank you very much for coming in. Here's a stack of paper. Take it home, fill it out, and come back when you're done. We'll help you. 
And her reaction to that was, don't hand me stacks of paper. You know, I'm a 20 something, I don't do stacks of paper. And Chase, you know, they were very polite to her, really more so than the credit union, and, and said, well, ma'am, you know, we, we only do auto loans online. You know, here's the URL. Um, if you have any problems, just call us. Mm-hmm. And she actually liked that better because at least she could sit down and not have to mess with paper. And then she walked in and talked to the auto dealer and they said to her, well, you know, here's the paperwork in front of you. Those other guys are offering you somewhere between three and 4% loans. We'll do one for a point and a half sign here. Mm-hmm. Guess who got the deal? Yeah. Yep. And, and so, you know, it's kind of interesting because you, you missed capturing that young person that we all say we want. Mm-hmm. Um, you offended her with paperwork. You probably could have got her with the online if the price was right. And the auto dealer provided personal service and a good price. And the scary part to me is I would bet that Chase branch and, and the credit union branch would tell you that they do a really good job for their customers and members. And they're really in touch with their population and she was in and out of there. They missed a lifetime opportunity and no one knew it. Steve, let me ask you a question. Where do you see banking going in FinTech? Is it going to be a train wreck or is it going to be one wins, one loses? Or is it a mesh? I think the most likely outcome is a mesh. Um, you know, there'll, there'll be some that are really successful and, and take consumers away from community banks, you know, no question. But I also see a lot of opportunity for community banks to work with fintechs because most of them don't have bank charters. And it's going to be a source of net new business for the people that are smart enough to figure out how to do that. And and we're starting to see it. I mean, you guys are advocating for this. Um, So I I think your mesh answer is, is the correct one. And, you know, the really interesting question is what can the banks with their community presence maybe do to help the fintechs? Because, you know, you guys are both making the point that you like to see a human being. Um, you know, maybe there's some way that uh, a little bit of personal customer service can get done through the banks. Good point. So I think, I think there's a, a technical opportunity to work together, you know, that's based on the bank's charter. Might even be a service delivery capability. And I've wondered, guys, um, look, I know that the popular narrative is that branches are going away. I think we all know I don't believe that. Probably wrong. We'll see. Fintechs, there's almost been no discussion. I think they're so diehard um, digital only, you know, not just digital first. There's The message has been so anti-branch. I don't know if I, I'll tell you, I don't hear. I mean, it is a dirty word in fintech, you, you I promise. Really good but I there. wonder when the banks, the community banks and the fintechs start to leverage that branch network together, there is a special sweet spot there. And it's just got to happen at some point, right? At least well, you know, I, I think the example for us, and it's an interesting one to think about, you know, every now and again, the, the credit unions steal a march on the banks and, you know, they have the concept of, of shared branching where I can walk into another a credit union's branch and they'll treat me like I was one of their members right. because they're in this network. Mm-hmm. And That's a good so one. That, that lets a little credit union say, oh yeah, I have customer service for you all over the country. Right. I think I, right, though, there's things that a bank can learn. Banking can learn from credit unions. Affinity, like the Affinity you know, is a good example. Uh, you know, you've got the branch shared network system. Uh, and I, I don't know. I don't, maybe I'm just that guy, but it seems to me that credit unions and banks are not the enemies that everyone makes them out to be. Mm-hmm. No, they're not. Banks, you've got credit unions. They both have brick and mortar. Mm-hmm. You've got FinTech, which is basically a, an app. And we're all fighting against four banks. <laughs> That's pretty fair. That's a good way to look at it. You know, yeah. Realize where the real fight is. Come together and talk to people like you that got the good ideas and the, the smart ways that have seen it. Put these together and the relationships to pull it off. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Definitely. There's lessons to be learned both ways, and and I think likewise for the bankers, it'd be worth setting aside you know an hour a week to listen to the craziest fintech ever and, you know, go look for that CEO on on a video somewhere and just sit down and listen because he's probably thinking about some things you've never thought about and you might learn something. And so I I think it's going to be a two-way street. What do you think, Dave? Well, I I think that's a great point. Uh, Also, there's so much 
in this business, I tell people all the time, I've met about four people in my life that understand banking because each segment of it is a bottomless pit. And I yep. think it's just too much for anybody to really grasp all of it. You can learn things from everybody. And likewise, don't be too quick to come up with a big idea and think you've heh, shown these dummies what's up. Uh, there's a lot to be learned on both sides. Yeah. Well, Steve, I'm going to give you the final thoughts, man. Give us your final thoughts. You get the, you get the microphone to, to end the show, man. Spoon or bass or gold spoon? <laughs> oh, boy, really putting me on the spot, huh? Yeah. yeah. Well, I, I would say the, probably the final thought is, you know, for a community banker, look at your real strength in customer service. You know, a, avoid the trap of saying, well, I'll just work hard on that and it'll save me. And say, how am I going to employ what I know in this new world? How am I going to put that old knowledge to work like it. in the new world as it works? Because very like much to Dave, Dave's point, they, they know a lot. The question is, how do you apply it in a, in a world that's changed a lot? I, I believe the companies are there right now. We, we talk to all of them all the time. And I think it's connecting the right parties together. Mm -hmm. And that's kind of... I don't know what you, what you call that. That's what Steve does. Yeah, a connector, right? Yeah. But, uh, Steve, he's a connector. <laughs> That's Steve's he's job. Yeah, yeah. So, yeah, having that ability to understand the technology, understand what the banker's trying to get done, and understand the customer base, and have lived enough to where you're not just guessing with a big chest poked out. Yeah. You actually have some experience under your belt, and you know what you're talking about. And I think in that complexity, there's very few people that should be listened to, and unfortunately, they're listening to the wrong people and they ought to be listening to people like you. Thank you and, and agreed. Hey, thanks for riding with the FinTech Cowboys. <laughs> hey, gentlemen. I'll see you, buddy.